Good morning. Welcome to Move Church. We are so thankful that you decided to tune in with us this morning. God has something amazing in store for you through this message today. Now let's get ready. Let's get excited for today's message. Well, good morning.
Redemptive Church, we are so thankful that y'all are here this morning with us. If you are a first-time guest, there should be a connection card in the seat back in front of you. We want you to fill that out and turn it into the black box on your way out of service this morning. And if you are watching online, we are so thankful that you tuned in with us this morning. I just wanted to say a little prayer before we get started back into our worship. Lord, we come to you today, God. We ask that you fill this place with your presence, Lord. Leave no one untouched here this morning, God. We ask you that you clear every distraction that there may be in these people's lives, Lord, that may block them from receiving your word this morning, God, because we know that your word can be life-changing, Lord, and we believe that everyone in here has a chance to receive something here, God. We ask that you come in here, Lord. Touch everyone, Lord. We ask you to feel your presence in this room, God. Leave no one unchanged. Let them be more changed than when they were walk, when they walked through this door this morning, God. Leave no one untouched, Lord. Amen.
y'all this morning. Nick here bringing two announcements with you. Number one is that we're so excited to move kids. It started back up. 
tell family and friends to bring their kids to come. They'll love it and learn more about Jesus. And number two is don't forget midweek prayer is this Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30. Come get your prayer on and spend time with the Spirit now. So love y'all. Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the service. So, so glad to see some smiling faces. At least I hope you're smiling up under those masks. I think we'll, we got in some Move Kids masks, and they look pretty sharp. And I hopefully we'll get our own Move Church mask this week sometime. So I know you're super excited about that. Sybil, would you come up, please? And you're going to help me intro, intro the uh, message, if you would. The Lord gave you a word just a moment ago. Would you share that? So, um, as we were talking about, we need to move. Um, some of us don't even know we need to move. But I, th I felt like the Lord was saying, don't miss your suddenly. I've had some suddenlies in my life where things looked like they were never going to change, and then suddenly, in an instant, it changed. So, I believe the Lord said that, you know how you're going to a strange place and you're driving a lot of this before we had GPS maybe you're not old enough to remember that but you're driving along and you're thinking I bet I missed that turn I think I missed the turn and you turn around and you go back well it ain't there and you have to keep going and just past where you turned and went back you got to your destination so don't you turn away from your hope and your prayers and your belief that your suddenly is about to happen. Because it is going to happen, but don't turn back and leave it. Keep forward because it's just ahead. It's just ahead. Amen. Amen. They receive that. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. I think Leonard Ravenhill said that. So when it, when it comes to God and you sense him moving, just grab a hold, okay? You will not regret it. And look, y'all, um, I'll share this word until, the, until it happens. Um, God told me, don't get so weighed down with the doom and gloom. Just get ready for the boom. I'm just going to go ahead and keep saying that every Sunday, I think, because we're ready for the boom of the Lord. What does it look like? I don't know, but I want it. Amen. Let the boom come in this room. Hey, a couple of announcements. Uh, we are going to begin our children's area remodel August the 8th on a Saturday. Give you some more details on that next Sunday. But if you're free to help out, we're going to start on Saturdays having some work days and on Thursday afternoons. And um, we're going to make it a nice environment for them. So uh, if you can help out with that, that would be uh, just great. And y'all on Wednesday nights, I believe uh, miracles are happening on Wednesday nights. I believe we're going to see them in this church through, uh, the, through the people. So Wednesday nights, 6.30 to 7.30. So this next Wednesday night, we'll have prayer. We'll have every prayer every Wednesday night, except the first Wednesday. The first Wednesday will be the first Wednesday of every month, and we'll have a time of praise and worship, word, prayer. Prayer will be the focus. Uh, that I'll be teaching you, I would just believe, a life-changing thing when it comes to getting your prayer started. So that's uh, first Wednesday coming up, a week from Wednesday. And it's 6.30 also. We're moving it to 6.30 so we don't confuse everybody with what time every Wednesday we ask. What, what time does it start? So everything on Wednesday nights start at 6.30 and it goes to 7.30. So I, look, come. I believe you'll be glad you did. I want to open up with a couple of simple texts today, but I believe very powerful. The Lord has put this in this word in my heart. This is, a, this is a standalone message, I think. First Thessalonians, Paul said this, look, don't put out the Spirit's fire. Don't put it out. 
that we have the ability that we can actually put out the Spirit's fire in our lives, not nowhere else. God's going to do what he wants to do. He's going to move whether you want him to or not. And whether you're a part of it, he's going to move. And I want to be a part of it. Or you, But here in our own life, we can actually quench, one translation says, we can quench the Spirit's fire. We're going to talk about it. I want to be this kind of person. Paul told young Timothy this, I remind you to fan, remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So we can either stop it or we can start it. We can either quench it, put it out, or we can fan it into flame. And I want it to flame in my life, and I believe you do too. So I want to talk to you a few moments about how to become a fire starter, fire starter. Patty and I had only been married a, just a few months, living in an apartment, and uh, I decided to put my man skills to the test by barbecuing. I hadn't had much experience, but every man needs to know how to barbecue, and all the men say amen. <laughs> Meat, fire, what could get better than that, right? And I, so I bought a little cheap charcoal grill and some instant like charcoal. And um, Bobby, I thought I was buying the kind that you just like the whole bag. I've seen that before, and you just like the whole bag. But I didn't know I bought the kind that you pour out of the bag, and you like the charcoal that's needed. So it, it, it was highly flammable. And I realized that when I put it in my little cheap charcoal grill and I lit the bag, I knew there was a problem when the bag began to breathe. The bag is not supposed to breathe. But it began to breathe. And about the third breath it took, it exploded. Flames went, yeah, flames went everywhere. And I'm looking like a really bad ballet dancer with my spatula putting out flames, dancing on my heels, flames all up around my eyebrows. I'm, I'm, I'm worried. And um, the bad thing about it, the, the door to the apartment was open, and Patty saw it all. It took me a while to get my man car back on that one. And um, I didn't know it, but the conditions were right for a fire. And I shared that little simple story with you because I believe the conditions are right in the church for the fire of God to fall. The Bible has a lot to say about fire in relation to God. Hebrews 12 says this, Our God is a consuming fire. He wants to consume you. It was on the day of Pentecost when the fire of God came into the upper room. The scripture says they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came on to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So if you're taking notes if, on your app, if you don't have the app, get the app. It's great. But right there on the app, the notes, the fire of God is the presence of God. The very presence of God. And the main thought of this message is really very simple today, and it's this. We need the fire of God's presence in our lives. You say, well, Pastor, I already got it. Well, let me say it this way. We need more of the fire of God's presence in our lives. There's more. There's more. He's an all-consuming fire. There's more. God's presence makes all the difference in the world. In our lives, it makes a difference in our church. Move Church, I really believe in programs. I believe in, in doing things, to campaigns, and, and getting uh, using drama and illustrations. As a matter of fact, we're really praying about one for Halloween. I won't share much about it, but really just reaching people with all of that, and that's great, and God uses that, but it can never substitute for the presence of God. We can have musicians lined up on musicians and and, and great services and greeters, which 
we got all of this, praise God, and God wants to add to our teams, right? But nothing, all of that's necessary and it's great and God can use it, but it can never replace the fire of God in our lives. The very presence of God working in and through us and in our church. In other words, we can do our best to reach people, but if we don't have the presence of God working in and through us, the Bible says it like this, the laborers, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. But when God's presence shows up, a person away from God can pull on the parking lot and something inside of them begins to have some anticipation. And they say, yeah, I gave in to drugs and I've been doing it all of my life and even last night I got high. But I just feel like something today is different because of the presence of God. I shared it in the first service. I was reminded, me and Patty began singing the song in the car, uh, Jesus, there's just something about that name. And I had a memory that when I was a young man riding the fence with the Lord, I'm telling you, I, I, I wanted to serve the Lord, but I wanted to do my own thing, and it was very difficult. And I came in one, one day, and back then, the only uh, music video stations that were out were, were MTV and, and VH1. Anybody remember those back in those days? And I flipped on the, I think it was MTV, and I'm going to date myself a little bit. Some of y'all won't remember, but there was a Christian group called DeGarmo and Key back in those days. And for some strange reason, they were on MTV singing the chorus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. And I'm telling you, the glory of God filled my living room. The presence, the fire of God touched me all over again. I wasn't looking for him. I was looking for a video. I was looking for, probably back in those days, Def Leppard, okay? Pour some sugar on me. Didn't need to listen to that, right? And then the fire of God came where I was, and maybe, just maybe, there's going to be some suddenlies like that that happen in our lives where God just shows up. And whether you're used to it, whether you ask for it or not, you just don't know, but you know it's God. It's God. I knew God filled that living room, and I began to sit there and weep and begin to sing that song, and it strengthened me. You may call it revival. You may call it the power of God. You may call it spirit-filled. You can call it the glory of God. You, you may not have words to describe it, but can I tell you one thing is for sure, you know when you experience it. And I'm just trying to, trying to tell you, if you have not experienced that kind of power of God, that fire of God's presence, you don't know what you're missing. And now that we can earn it, he just wants to set us on fire. And Paul says in the opening scriptures, don't put it out. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. He wants to burn in every one of us. He told Timothy to fan it into flame. You know, it's the thing about God. He doesn't force anything on us. Salvation, we receive. Water baptism, we decide. Spirit filled, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, we open ourselves up and surrender. Experiencing God's presence in your life every day, it's your decision in mind. I can either fan it into flame with my life or I can quench it. And we need the fire of God. Every one of us need the fire of God every day in my life. I need the fire of God's presence. I know when I'm experiencing it, and I know when I'm in maintenance mode. And you do too if you're a Christian. D.O. Moody once was asked, why do you need to be filled with God's presence continually? And he said simply, because I leak. And we all leak. So what is it with fire? I love that sound. You hear our kids having a great time? Can we just praise God for that? Come on, let's give God praise that our children are being ministered to once again. So what does fire have to do with God? There's some facts about fire. First of all, fire heats, heats it up. If you've ever been camping out in the cold, you know how important a good fire is. The closer you get to the fire, the warmer you get. 
It can be below freezing, and a good fire will keep you warm and not affected by the cold atmosphere around you. And I don't know how much colder this world can get to the things of God. And hear me. The world is cold because the church of America is lukewarm. And I really believe, though, God is fixing to heat things up again in the church of America. And Jesus said it to the church of Laodicea. He said, look, I know your deeds. You're doing some really great things. But he said, look, you're neither hot, cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. That's strong words. I look at it as God saying, this makes me nauseous. It makes me sick in my stomach for you to pretend to be something that you're not. See, the thing about people, when you say cold, you, you automatically, and I believe Jesus is equating those, to those that are lost. And, and the thing about people that are lost, at least they know they're lost. I mean, they may not admit they need God, but they know, hey, I don't do things right. But you find a lukewarm Christian, they'll justify everything that they do. And the thing about lukewarm Christians, they create other lukewarm Christians. And there's eternal souls at stake. Jesus said it like this, there'll be those who acknowledge me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And he said, they have a knowledge of God, but they deny the power thereof. And that's religion. That's what religion does. It justifies sin in our life. Oh, by the way, we're glad you're watching on Facebook. <laughs> Just happened. I forgot to welcome you earlier. So this is a little different kind of message, but hang on, the Lord's going to speak to us. Let's make them feel welcome. Would you do that? We're a transition, but we need the fire of God, and I'll, I'll show you some other reasons that why God is equi equated with fire, and I myself do not want to be a lukewarm Christian. I don't want to have just enough God in me to be miserable. I want to surrender completely and let him burn, and I know you do too. We can fan it into flame, the fire of God. And the Bible says a lot about fire, and I'll mention a few more scriptures in a moment. But look, another fact about fire, fire purifies. The refining process of gold, they say that gold in its, in its rare form is not pure. For it to be pure gold, they have to heat it to a Fahrenheit of about 2,000 degrees for it to be liquefied. And when it's liquefied, they can strain and get all the other impurities, the other metals out. And that's exactly what happens in our lives when the fire of God begins to burn. If you've ever pressed in closer to God, you may be surprised to find that some things begin to surface. Tell you what, uh, I'm going to mention this as a take-home for us. Uh, try fasting this week. When you fast, you'll see some impurities in your life. Fasting is a way that you just try to draw closer to God by, by denying the flesh, and you'll see how strong the flesh is. And when the presence of God begins to show up in your life and begin to pull you closer, you'll find some things begin to surface in your life. And that's simply the presence of God trying to purify your life. He doesn't show you those things to push you away from him, he shows you those things so he, his grace can deal with them and he can pull you closer and closer and closer to him. The fire of God purifies our lives and don't we all need it? I mean, things that we think are okay right now that you get closer to God, when you get closer to his holiness, you begin to say, no, I can't do that anymore. I can't, I can't put up with I can't tolerate that anymore. It's not worth it when it comes to being close to God. This is what happened to Isaiah when he had a vision of the Lord in his throne. He said, woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. 
and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty, that he experienced the throne of God, and he realized, God, I, I shouldn't even be here because I have, un, I have unclean lips. The things that come out of my mouth should not allow me to be in your holy presence. And look at what the scripture says. Then one of the seraphim flew to me and with a live cold, coal in his hands, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. The fire of God at the altar with coals, burning coals, came and purified him. It said, with it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. And we need the fire of God's presence to come and touch our lives, to purify us. God's presence doesn't show you sin without leading you to God's grace to forgive you. And I so love it. I want him to show every, me anything in my life that would keep me from drawing close to him. The fire of God purifies it also illuminates. Before electricity, some of y'all will remember that. Fire was, <laughs> fire was a main source of light. And I love it because in the scriptures it says when the, God led the children of Israel out of Egypt, during the day he would lead them by a cloud, and at night he would lead them by a pillar of fire. Can you imagine that sight? Out on this wilderness, and there is a blazing inferno leading you. Sometimes they moved at night. And by the way, that's the reason why we're called Move Church, not because we like to move around in buildings. We're called Move Church because we want to move after the presence, the cloud by day and the fire by night, the move of God that we just sang about. And man, I want to see God's fire burn in my life and burn in this church. We're praying for revival moving after him, and at night he would lead them by the pillar of fire. They didn't have to worry about where they were going. All they had to do was follow the fire. You know, right now, don't we have so many questions? I just heard this week on the news that now they're saying there's five or six strands of coronavirus. And by the way, the antibacterial that you can't hardly find, it could kill you. They had a recall on a lot of that. It could be very bad for your health. Who knows what really is going on? We won't know until about two or three years from now when they come back and say, oh, we discovered, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just trying to help us today. We don't have to have it figured out. Let's just follow the fire of God. Let's do what we need to do, but focusing on the fire of God. We don't have to know how to get from here to there if we're just following the fire of God's presence. Fire also attracts, it mesmerizes, it draws your attention to it. When we do a fire pit at the house, I can just sit there and, and just watch the flames. And preacher who invited a man in his town to church many, many times, and the man would never come. And Unfortunately, one day the man's, the preacher's church went up in flames, caught on fire. And the crowd formed outside, and the man saw, the preacher saw the man actually standing there watching the fire. The preacher went up to him and he said, how many times I invited you to my church and you never would come? And the man simply said, well, preacher, your church ain't never been on fire before. And symbolically, I'm telling you, if our church, the church of America, if we get on fire, we'll reach the lost. But God has to do some stuff in us first. And when they see the fire of God working in our lives, it will attract them. Jesus said it, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. 
Instead, they put it on the stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. And we know he's talking about God's presence working in us, right? The light of God. That others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And let's, let's ask God to start a fire in us that will affect others with his glory. I, uh, I have a, a little illustration. This almost got me in trouble during the first service. I told Owen before service, he spotted this in the bag. He said, what do you have? And he said, I know what it is. It's a water gun. I said, yeah, and I'm going to give it to you after the second service. I saw him earlier as I was I came into the second service, and he was back in the back. He looked at me and just went, He's waiting on this water gun. And just a simple illustration, you know, we can either be fire starters or we can be fire stoppers. We can quench the Holy Spirit working in our life. And, and you just may be a fire stopper if you say things like this. Why do we have to sing so many of those praise songs? I didn't get you, did I, baby? It just seems like, it just seems like we're just standing up for hours. Why do people always have to lift their hands? And why do, what are they shouting about? Well, I started to get the camera on that one. You, you are probably a fire stopper. Well, well, I believe in Jesus, but you don't have to be fanatical about it. That, that goes a long way. Brother, you, you won't catch me speaking in tongues. That's right. And you are probably a certified fire stopper. And I... Let me let me ask you again. I, I know probably not talking to anybody in this room. Maybe for somebody that may watch this later on. But this is what I felt in my spirit. Why? What do you have to lose? We surrender our life to so many other things. What do you have to lose when it comes to surrendering to everything God has? And if God begins to burn in your life, why not just fan it into flame? Why would you want to put it? You know who would want you to put it out, but why put it out? I want to be a fire starter. I want more of God's presence in my life. I want to experience a fresh anointing every day of my life. I want to be consumed by him. And I want to fan into flame everything that God brings in my way. Every flame that he sends my way, I want to fan it into flame. Look at what John said about Jesus. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more important, more powerful, excuse me, than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire. Fire of God's presence. Jesus wants to set you on fire with his presence. He provides the fire if you will provide the fuel. And if I was still a youth pastor, I would do something like this. I did buy some lighter fluid. And I thought through, back in the youth pastor days, I didn't think it through. And I thought I better not use this today. As a youth pastor, Terry, I probably would have had some logs up here and would have kept dousing the logs, and then I would have dropped a match on it. But you know I like this building. I really do. And I thought I won't do that. 
maybe I can put some in my mouth and blow it out as I light the flame. But then I thought, my deductible is too high for that. <laughs> so the fire of God, how do we, what is the fuel that we can provide? And let me just give it to you in words. Fuel for fire starting. The first one is this, dedication. Dedication to God. It's a commitment, a total commitment. And this is where the flame begins to burn. It starts with a complete surrender to God. You know, in the Old Testament times, a sin offering was brought to the priest, and part of it was burned on the altar, and it became a burnt offering. It was a total sacrifice, a commitment, excuse me, more so on the animal's part, right? But it required effort. It required them to get the animal. It had to be a spotless animal. There were certain requirements. It required commitment. A sacrifice is what God asks of me and you. The Bible says that we don't even own ourselves if we're Christians. It says we were bought with a price. And do we know what the scripture says about worship? It says true worship is this, to offer our bodies as, as, <clears throat> excuse me, as a living sacrifice. Totally committed to God. I'm just amazed how we can say that we belong to God, but we still want to call the shots. And we say, God, bless my plans. Why don't we try to do God's plans that's already blessed? And when we conform God down to our patterns, to our life, that's all we get, a God that's big as us. And our God is much bigger. And he wants to do so much more in each of us. Dedication, total commitment. And when we fully commit to God, the fire of his presence begins to burn in our lives. It's where so many people miss it. They ask him to forgive them of their sins. That's great. And the fire begins there. But then the Holy Spirit begins to conform you into the image of Christ. And it takes your cooperation. That's when you begin to fan it into flame. So many people receive forgiveness, but then when the Holy Spirit begins to work, they begin to quench that, back away. And God is asking for 100% dedication. What does that mean, Pastor? That means, God, wherever you go, I go. Whatever you do, I do. Whatever you say, I say. I am not my own. I was purchased. And the flame of God begins to burn in a heart that's dedicated, completely, completely committed. And then you can add some fuel to that fire with devotion. It takes commitment first, but then your love for God begins to grow. The love doesn't come first. We don't even know how to love God. The Bible says we love because he first loved us. And when we receive that love, we submit to that love, we commit to that love, then we begin to fall in love with him. Devotion. Passionate for God. Devotion is love, loyalty, enthusiasm. And boy, can't you spot what a person is devoted to? Isn't it easy to understand what they're devoted to? It comes out of their mouth. Man, you can see it in their statements, their checking statements, where they spend their money at. If you're devoted, it's going to show up. And it's the same with God. When we're completely devoted it's just going to come out. We're going to say things like this. I know I'm talking about God a lot, but can I just tell you what he's just done in my life? Devoted, loving him, enthusiastic about him. And Jeremiah had this kind of devotion. He said this, but if I say I will not mention his word or speak anymore in his name, his word, his word is in my heart like a fire, 
a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I can't help myself. Even if I said I won't do it, it's got to come out of me. It's like a fire. And man, don't we need that kind of devotion to the Lord? Doesn't the world need to see a church that's that devoted to the Lord? Hey, if we have to wear a mask to have church, we'll wear a mask. The only place I stop is if they say we have to wear leggings. Nope. No, I'll do it for Jesus. I will, I will. I'll look ugly, but I'll do it for Jesus. <laughs> it's interesting that Jesus talking to the church of Ephesians, he said this, I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. You've abandoned the love you had at first. And I'm, I, and I'm convinced of this, that many times we allow other things, other things that we're devoted to. And, and, and look, if God is first, he's okay with you being devoted to other things. But he's got to be first. He's got to be the first love. But many things that we let come in our life that consumes us and replaces him from first place. And those things extinguish the fire of God in our life. And then we wonder, I wonder why this song used to move me, but now it doesn't. And I wonder why I don't think, on, and I wonder why I have such a hard time thinking about God and praying. And it's very likely we've allowed some things to remove us, to remove our first love. He said, repent and do the works you did at first. He said, if not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The lamp stand is useless without a flame. And what's the lamp stand? Theologians would, would say it's symbolic of the Spirit of God in your life, the spirits of God, and others may say different things. But one of the things I want to bring out is it takes oil in the lampstand for the fire to burn. The oil has to be placed in the lampstand. The priest would put the oil, made sure it had a continuous supply of oil. And I see that oil as the love, our love for God, our passion for him. And maybe today, some of us need to repent and put him first place again. And if you do that, the fire of God will begin to burn again in your life. And that brings me to the last one, and we'll close. And that's a desperation. Once you begin to fall in love with God, you become desperate for him. Most of us remember when we first fell in love with our Sweetheart, I used to drive many miles just to be able to see Patty for a few minutes. I used to call her long distance from Florence to Brandon. Cost him money, long distance. That dates us, don't it? And then with the long distance charges adding up, Miss Shelby, she would say, you hang up first. I would say, no, you hang up first. <laughs> and we would spend another good 10 minutes seeing who's going to hang up first. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Just desperate to see her. Desperate to see each other. And I think about desperation. I think about hunger. person that's really, really hungry. Not like me and you. <laughs> who we can eat a couple of... Hours earlier, and we say we're hungry. We're talking about a hunger that you look for, it, you search it out, you hunt it down, you go after it. 
And man, can't we do that for the food that we really want? We'll drive 50 miles and stand in line 50 minutes to pay $50 for something to fill our flesh. But when it comes to God's presence, we put him on a timetable. And we'll say, I'll, I'll do it, but don't cost me too much. Come on, I know I'm preaching to the choir, and I understand. I, I believe this is, we're a room full of fire starters, but maybe some of us need to be challenged. A desperation for God. Am I desperate for him? And I have to ask myself, to be completely honest, I have to tell you that I have to ask myself this quite often. Do I really understand there are people dying and going to hell without Jesus? Do I really understand that? Because if I can keep that at the frontal lobe of my mind, I can understand I need God's presence and and I need to be close to God. If I can reach them, help me to reach them. If I cannot, at least I can pray and intercede for them like somebody did for me. And I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit wakens us up at different times. It gets our attention. Maybe through a message like this that I need myself many times. Maybe through a song, maybe through a word, maybe through a reminder by a spoken word over your life that he wakes us up and lets us know, hey, you're letting the flame die down. Those things are dousing water on it. Hey, come on, fan it into flame today. Would you stand with me? I'll close with this. You know, I... Um, I like to watch survival shows, some. Anybody seen Alone? It's pretty amazing. They stick them out there all by themselves, and about 10 items is all they have. And uh, I, I would be like one, one brother. I saw him, man, and he, he landed the first day, and he said, man, look, there's some bear scat. If you don't know what bear scat is, it's bird, I'm a, a bear um, poop. That brother tapped out the first day. He said, oh, it's getting real now, and he tapped out. And um, I, for some reason, I like to watch those shows, even though I'm not a survivalist. I like to watch those shows from my recliner eating my Doritos. There's a certain comfort to that. Poor sucker. Man, I hope you find some help. There's a certain comfort, certain pleasure in that. Maybe sick, but it is. And, um, but one thing I've learned from them is, is this, that as soon as you get there, you got to find some shelter. you got to make some shelter. I mean, you got to get something to cover your head that night. And then the second thing they all say is this, you got to build a fire. Fire makes everything else work. If you have a shelter, you can still freeze with the shelter. Fire makes the shelter work. You can find water. Water is the third thing. You better find you some water, but you need the fire to boil the water. Yeah, you can find some food, but you better have some fire to cook the food. So the fire is everything. Find you some shelter. And this is what I believe the Lord showed me, that we first find the shelter. The shelter is the cross. We come to the cross. We got to have the cross. That gives us the ability to stay, right? Spiritually stay with God. We need the shelter of the cross. But as soon as you come to the shelter, you need the fire. You need the fire of God's presence. It just makes everything else work. We need the fire today of God's presence. What does that mean? It means you need more of God's presence in your life, in my life. That's the answer to everything. The 99-year-old Pentecostal grandmother who's lived for the Lord all of her life spends more time in prayer than me and you spend doing anything else. She needs more of God's presence in her life. We all need more of Him. We all need to fan into flame the gift of God in our life. Will you bow your head with me? want to first pray a prayer of repentance. And maybe you see, well, Pastor, I've allowed some other things in my life, some other things that I've put God, that's put, moved God, I've put them before God. And today, 
Again, if God shows you something, he always shows you with his grace extended to you so he can bring you closer to him. Maybe you see some other areas that, maybe it's not sin, but you see yourself just sort of quenching the fire. You're sort of putting it out when you're used to fan it. I don't know. The Lord will let you know. And I want to pray a prayer with you. We call it a salvation prayer. I'm mean, a commitment prayer. It can be called a salvation prayer if you're watching online. We want you to pray this. God is working in your life right now. He wants to touch your life. He wants to bring you closer to him. And the way we do it, we'll give you the words, but you just give God your heart right now. So completely surrender, completely become devoted to him. You have nothing to lose. What you got to lose you got life to lose, but I'm telling you, if you'll give your life to Christ, you'll be so glad. Completely surrender. Let's pray at church. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me so much that you gave your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Would you forgive me for all my sins? Would you come into my heart? Would you change my life? And I'm going to do my best to live for you in Jesus' name. Father, I believe there have been many who prayed that prayer right now, and maybe it's even when they watch this video later on. And I thank you, Lord, as they submitted their life to you. Now, Lord, let that fire burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. And I thank you in Jesus' name. One last prayer that I want to pray, and this one's going to be a little different, okay? And without any condemnation whatsoever, but if you feel the Holy Ghost really speaking to you through this message, you say, Pastor, I feel like this was for me today. I want to pray with you. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to come out and come up front, and I just want to come by and gently place my hands on you believing that God will fan the flame of his presence in your life. This is really not a time for praying for needs. This is not a time for, for praying for anybody else other than the, the fire of God in your life. So when I do that, I'm going to ask everyone else just to be dismissed. And uh, if you want to sit in here, you can. You can just sit in here and, and praise and worship God. But I believe God wants to touch you today. I really do. I believe he wants to fan that flame in your life. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you have a blessed week. Stay safe out there. God bless you. Go in peace. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope that this message has blessed you and your family this morning. In the book of Mark, Jesus tells us to go out and proclaim the gospel to all of creation. So with that being said, we ask you to share this message so that not only you, but everyone may see it and so that everyone may be blessed. We hope you have an amazing rest of your day and a blessed week.